Hey gang, a listener has shared a story with us. You know who you are. Thank you. This video is longer than normal. If that's an issue for you, click off. I will keep my commentary to a minimum, if any at all. He says, I have decided to write and tell my story. This is when I was quite young and didn't have as much life experience as I do now. I grew up with parents who met, fell in love, and married quickly. They were both great examples of what parents should be and showed me what a healthy marriage was supposed to look like. I was very fortunate to see that in my life. Unfortunately for me, it probably made me naive to what most relationships actually look like and I kept getting hurt by most of the girls I went out with. Now, this was mostly through high school, so it wasn't too serious, but when I was in my senior year, I met a young lady at my work. She and I were the same age, but she had already graduated. I always had a thing for foreign women, especially Asian ones. This girl was from the Philippines, and at first, it was rather casual. As time went on, it grew more serious. I am thinking she must have had poor tasting guys before me because when I was introduced to her parents, they fell in love with me right away and were so happy their daughter met me. I didn't think our relationship was going to grow like it did, but midway through my last year of high school, she got pregnant. At that time, I wasn't too serious about going to college, but was starting to entertain the idea. But those dreams were shattered when I heard those words. I knew I had to grow up and be a man now. I didn't want to be one of those losers who ran away when they knocked someone up. I knew what I had to do. Besides, I wanted to have my child know me and always wanted to be in my child's life. Letting my kids grow up in a broken home wasn't an option for me. We eventually moved in together shortly after I graduated and our son was born. For a while, things were going as well as they could be. We didn't make much money, but we got by. Her parents lived two apartments away. So it was always easy to bring the baby over if we needed to go somewhere. When my fiance at the time turned 21, she and her friends wanted to go out a bit. With my work schedule, I had to be up early, so staying out late wasn't good for me. Besides, I didn't like the club scene and all that. She didn't go out all the time, and I knew the girl she went with. They were all either married or in relationships. Sometimes their significant others would go, and I was friends with them, so, if there was any funny business, they would spill the beans. As time went on, nothing bad happened. So there was a degree of trust built. I would go out sometimes with them, so I saw what went on. Then she began talking about another coworker, Jason. Jason this and Jason that. <laughs> I just did a video about this, mentioning another man's name often. It's usually a bad sign. I decided to go and meet this Jason and see what was going on. When I would come by her work, he would shake my hand and act like we were bros. My fiance told me that Jason and his girlfriend were having problems and he would talk to her about it. Then she would try to offer solutions or talk to the girlfriend to help their relationship. This was back in the 90s, so cell phones were not a thing. Since she had never given me a reason to be suspicious of her actions, it didn't bother me that sometimes she and her coworkers would hang out and sometimes go places like the lake or even go out. Since I was with the baby, I couldn't go. And sometimes her parents were unable to watch the baby due to their work schedule. So I just let her go out. I know with my experience that I wouldn't let that sort of thing happen anymore. One night she started acting strange and asked if she could go out for an hour or two. She said there was something she had to do and she didn't plan on going out anymore. She said she would explain later. I reluctantly let her go and went to bed. A couple of hours later, she came home, woke me up, and said she had something to tell me. She confessed that she had cheated on me. Yes, with Jason. She went out that night to end it with him. The guilt was overwhelming to her. I was still a little dizzy from just being woken up out of a sound sleep and had this crazy news dropped on me. I went numb. I didn't yell, throw things, or even call her names. I went silent. I began to wonder if I deserved it somehow. I know I didn't, but what I didn't mention was our relationship was pretty rocky for a while, mostly because I lied to her so many times, as many young guys do. I didn't cheat or anything, but every lie I told her came out like karma was just waiting there to kick my ass for nearly screwing up the most important relationship I ever had. 
She threatened to leave me so many times I changed my ways and became the best partner I could be for us and our child. Call that growing pains, but it was my way of growing from a boy to a man. Thankfully, we got over all that and had a good long time of growing together as a family and working together to be good partners. Or so I thought. Now, I have to deal with all of this coming back to bite me, and I am questioning if me changing my ways from my growing family was too little, too late. I had to try to find out what exactly happened between the two of them. She told me that night that over time, they started having feelings for each other, and when they would be alone, they would kiss. She said she began to feel incredibly guilty knowing that I was at home with our baby while she did this. I asked if there was any sex. She denied it. I felt if that was true, there might be some way to fix this. I didn't want to split up and have our child going from home to home while we tried to co-parent. I told her I knew it was hard to confess this and I didn't know what to think right now. I needed time to process all of this. The next day we talked more and this time she confessed there was sex, but only once. She regretted it. I keep hearing all of these cheating stories and it's like they all sound almost the same. Yes, she gave me the trickle truth. They had sex on many occasions and one of her friends knew it. They would go out together and meet up with Jason and another guy. Then they would go to separate bedrooms and have their fun before later on, she would be dropped off back at home. I was devastated. All I wanted was to have a marriage, something like my parents had. I felt like a failure in every way except as a dad. I knew I was good there and I would sacrifice whatever I had to in order to give my son a good stable upbringing like I had. I know how important having a two parent household is for kids growing up and I was going to try to make that happen. Now his mom just messed that up. As time passed, she stopped talking to Jason and begged for another chance. To try to salvage a piece of what we once had, I agreed to give it a try. Trust was gone, but she did what she could to gain it back. In time, things got back to somewhat normal. She told me many times about how grateful she was that I gave us another chance. So fast forward, we had another child and got married. Financially, things didn't get much better. So I took up a job offer to move to a new city by one of my good friends. The money was better with the same cost of living. So this was going to be a big improvement for us due to our financial situation Everyone could not move all at once. I would move along with my father-in-law and we would work and save for about six months, then move my wife, two kids, and mother-in-law down. She had a job waiting for her as well at the company my friend worked for. So it sounded like a real plan to make a positive change for the family and improve our situation. As the saying goes, once a cheater, always a cheater. About three months into my move, she tells me that she wants to separate. I was confused. What do you mean separate? I don't think she knew what that meant. She wanted to take a break from our relationship because there was another guy that she now has feelings for. And before she ends up cheating, she wants to separate from me and start things with him. <laughs> what have I said, guys? If they want out, show them the door permanently. This woman is crazy. There was nothing I could do. If I said okay, she was going to cheat. If I said no, she was going to cheat. It was a catch-22. I lose both ways. She couldn't even wait a measly three months to move down with her family and start over. I also found out later that she immediately went back to Jason the second I left. I heard before I left as well. She couldn't seem to leave this guy alone, but it didn't last. So she found another, partly because I was still trying to find a silver lining but mostly because I was so angry, I moved her and the kids down anyway. I wanted to be with my kids, and I also wanted to show her how much better it would be where I was living now. My friend still got her a new job, and it was making her more money than she ever had made before. I was expecting her to see what her new life was going to look like and realize she made a huge mistake, but she was far more stubborn than I thought. All she did was miss the new guy and it infuriated me. Yes, I know, I was stupid. I think I was just trying to force pieces of a puzzle into places where they just didn't fit. I also wanted her to know how downright awful she was being to me and her family. Her parents were absolutely angry with her for what she had done to us. They nearly disowned her. 
They were old school and very traditional. Plus they loved me to death and our children. She was so stubborn she refused to see the damage she was doing or even admit wrongdoing. But just wait until you hear what happened next. Every once in a while, the new boyfriend and many of my wife's friends would take the eight hour drive to visit her. They would always meet somewhere else because if I saw him in person, I would probably get arrested. This happened several times till one day tragedy struck. A car filled with what? A car filled with my wife's friends and her new lover had come to visit for a few days. The day they all planned to leave, instead of saying their goodbyes and taking a long drive in the morning, they decided to spend the whole day together and wait until my wife was going to work. I think she had the 4 p.m. to midnight shift. They took her to work and left. About two hours into the drive, the lover was behind the wheel and fell asleep. He started driving off the road, woke up and overcorrected, flipping the SUV on the freeway. Everyone in the car was asleep as well, and some of them were thrown from the vehicle, including her best friend and her two-year-old child. Her best friend was crushed by the rolling vehicle, killing her, and the child broke both femurs. Her best friend's husband nearly died and was in the ICU for over a month. The lover had his seatbelt on and came out with barely a scratch. Needless to say, my wife lost it, and her reaction was as far from logical as you can get. But are you surprised? She grew closer to her lover over this. She quit her job and moved back to our old hometown with him. Yes, I divorced her. I was planning it for some time, but I just didn't have the funds to hire a lawyer at the time. Because we didn't have any assets together, there was nothing to split but the kids. I set it up as 50-50 for everything, and neither of us had to pay child support. I always hated the idea of divorce, but in this case, there was no other option. The two of them had a baby together, but tragedy struck again. The child was about six months old, when he came down with a terrible meningitis infection and died. I think the death of her friend and child really sobered her up. She changed after that. Call it what you want, but I know karma is real. Karma hit them really hard too. He has to live with the guilt of killing his lover's best friend and the loss of their child. I know messing with a married woman and breaking up a marriage can't be good for your karma. With law... <clears throat> With all of this craziness I had to endure, I somehow still found a way to properly co-parent my kids. I shielded them from all of the trauma I went through and made sure they grew up to be great young men who are married with kids themselves. My ex-wife and her lover are still together but never married. They have two girls and my ex is a completely different person. We still talk sometimes and somehow get along well now. My boys do know most of what happened back then. I never wanted to hide that from them, but I wanted to wait until they were old enough to understand it fully and could process it. They know we put on a front for them out of love for them, but they would never know how much I suffered inside after all I went through. I know many guys might write in about their crazy Filipino stories. After my divorce, I ended up meeting another Filipina whom I was introduced to by her relative. After a few years of communicating with her, I met her in person and we ended up being married for nearly two decades now. I actually got the marriage I had always wanted. Since your channel is about cheating stories, that story will have to be told elsewhere, but I found my happiness. Thanks for listening. Well, thank you for sharing. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.